Why do the religious have absolutely no clue what they're doing? Oh, right, it's because they don't care, but that's not exactly a good excuse, is it? It shouldn't be difficult to prove just how wrong they are, but they don't know how to do any independent research. They just blather their religious nonsense everywhere and hope nobody notices. Except we do. We always do. So, let's get back to the grind. Welcome back to part two of video number nine of Daniel King's Proof for God series. We're not going to see any more proof here than we have anywhere else, but uh, we're not really surprised at that, are we? At least we don't have to put up with another strut this time, although that means we don't get to laugh at the new music either. I almost wanted to stick one in just for giggles, but uh, I held myself back. Anyway, can Daniel pull it out in the end, or is this going to be even worse than the last time? Place your bets, and let's get going. 12. The Rotation of the Earth So, we're going to start off exactly where we left off, with just four more of these so-called reasons to go. Therefore, I'm just going to go through them real quick, because, hey, we don't have to skip this early in a video, do we? They're not going to fare any better than the rest, and then... I hope he gets on to something more interesting. I mean, honestly, how wrong can one person be all at the same time? I don't know. Let's see. If it took more than 24 hours for the Earth to rotate, it would cause huge, huge temperature swings between day and night. So what? Because, again, people do live in Alaska. Anyone living near the poles has a huge day-night cycle swing, and with them, huge temperature swings. Yet, they're still alive, aren't they? I mean, I know this is a comic book slash movie example, but let's go look at 30 Days of Night. It takes place in Barrow, Alaska, which is a real place, or it was before they changed the name, and it gets dark for an entire month straight. Granted, there are any vampires, at least not that we know of, but there are plenty of places on the planet that get dark for extended periods of time, and people do just fine. People live in sub-zero temperatures. Is he really this stupid, or what? If the rotation of the Earth was accelerated, it would cause substantial atmospheric wind velocity. It would cause the quality of the wind to change, but that's about it. The Earth's rotation causes the Coriolis effect, which causes winds to circulate somewhat chaotically. If the Earth didn't rotate at all, we'd have prevailing winds that are primarily north to south or south to north, generally toward the equator. Again, people live in places with very high winds, myself included, and we're all doing just fine. What a maroon. 13 the planetary ecosystem. The rain falls, waters the plants, runs down rivers to the ocean, evaporates, and falls again. Generally speaking, sure. Now, place your bets on what he's going to get wrong, because we all know that he will. Fractally wrong doesn't even begin to describe the mind of Daniel King. So, go ahead and pause here, and let me know where he's going to screw up in the comments. Then, we can continue. This water cycle is just one of many cycles, including the nitrogen cycle, oxygen cycle, and carbon cycles. There are cycles of summer and winter, and cycles of birth and death. The consistency of these cycles is necessary to make life on this Earth possible. Okay, but you haven't shown that you have any understanding whatsoever of any of it, nor that you comprehend what might happen if it was any different. Again, he's just playing make-believe by only considering our current form of life and saying, well, if we can't exist, then nothing could. Because, as I said last time, tardigrades will do just fine with most changes unless you completely destroy the planet or burn off the seas. So, life is okay. Maybe not our life, but we're just not that special. This is just childish ego speaking which I think pretty much describes Daniel King. 14. Proton Decay 
If a proton decayed any faster, humans would die from radiation. If protons decayed any slower, there would not be enough matter in the universe for life to exist. Notice how he's struggling to get through some very basic words. Danny Boy is just not that bright. He's really at the point of saying, well, what if up was down and down was up? Yeah, he probably believes Australians are standing on their heads. This is really the problem that I have with these religious idiot apologists. They don't actually understand any of it. They're just saying it because it makes them feel good. I'm sure someone could go figure out where he got his list, somebody with more free time than I have, but it doesn't really matter. He can't speak intelligently about any of this because he's not intelligent. This is all just, well, it seems to me crap, and he's demonstrably wrong about all of it. He doesn't care because this isn't about presenting a cumulative intellectual case. It's about throwing around ideas fast and loose so that the religious feel better about the insane things they believe. Again, this video might have 78 views at the time I'm writing this one, but it only has three upvotes. And that tells us that the religious are hardly watching at all. 15. The polarity of water molecules. If a water molecule had any greater polarity, life could not exist. Again, our life. Not any life, just ours, and that's even iffy. I'll let him get on with his insanity in a second, but here's generally what I think he's talking about, even though I'm pretty sure he hasn't got a clue. Water is electrically neutral overall, but because of the arrangement of the hydrogen atoms on the oxygen atom, it's slightly electrically positive on one side and slightly electrically negative on the other. Overall, it all comes out in the wash, but... Where it's important is hydrogen bonding. It's due to the way that the atoms share electrons that allow water to do some of the things that it does. And we all know that Daniel doesn't understand any of this. He's just reading off of a script that he found online. So let's give him a second to hang himself further before we continue. If a water molecule had less polarity, Ice would not float, and it would continue to build up until the whole planet was frozen over. Um, no. I mean, given temperatures above the melting point, ice would still melt just fine. Going back to the last videos, we are still in the Goldilocks zone, meaning that liquid water will still be maintained. If we were further out in the solar system, sure... Maybe, unless something like nuclear decay or internal stresses cause the temperature to rise. And that's why there's likely liquid water beneath the surface of Europa. Tidal forces from Jupiter do all of that, and our own moon would help at least a little bit. Would we have some environmental effect? Sure. Would it turn the planet into an ice ball? No. No, it wouldn't. We might have a really bad ice age, but... Guess who lived through the last Ice Age? Yeah, humans did. And that is just 15 of 75 necessary conditions for life to exist. And you screwed up all 15. If he'd just taken a moment, just one, to type any of these things into Google, he would have found out just how wrong he was. But he didn't bother with that, did he? Because he doesn't care. And he doesn't figure his intended audience cares either. They'll all just go, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, because they aren't concerned about the reality of any of it. I mean, we could go back and debunk the claims that we skipped over last time. I only did it because I didn't want to bore anybody, but really, what's the point? It isn't like King has a brain in his head. He just doesn't give a crap. He's just embarrassing himself in public. And I find it hard to believe that anybody doesn't recognize that, except for the terminally religiously dumb. How did such precision come about? It didn't. Now, let's revisit the puddle analogy, because it's really all that needs to be said. I mean, there's no other conclusion you can come to. And it's rather like a puddle waking up one morning... I know they don't normally do this, but allow me, I'm a science fiction writer. <laughs> a puddle wakes up one morning and thinks, 
This is a very interesting world I find myself in. It fits me very neatly. In fact, it fits me so neatly. I mean, really precise, isn't it? <laughs> it must have been made to have me in it. And the sun rises and is continuing to narrate the story about this hole being made to have him in it. And the sun rises, and gradually the puddle is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. And by the time the puddle ceases to exist, it's still thinking, it's still trapped in this idea that the, the hole was there for it. And if we think the world is here for us, we will continue to destroy it in the way that we've been destroying it, because we think we can do no harm. There are only two possible explanations, random chance or intentional design. Bullshit. Welcome back, false dichotomy. We've missed you. The mathematical probability of everything happening by chance are so astronomically small as to approach impossibility. Not remotely. The problem here is that he's starting out with the assumption that our current state is what was supposed to happen, and then he's calculating odds based on how hard it would be to make it happen exactly as it did. But that's not how reality works. It's why I did the puddle video again because, well, I love Douglas Adams, and this is exactly what he's doing wrong. We are a product of our universe. Our universe does not exist specifically to bring us about. The chances of things turning out exactly as they did, they're 100%, because there they are. We are the way that we are, because that's how the universe is. We are not special. Get over yourself. So great is the improbability that it takes more faith to believe in random chance than it does to believe in an intelligent creator. No, we just have to point out how piss poor your assumptions are. This is exactly why you don't rely on worldviews. That's where he's going fundamentally wrong. He assumes, without evidence or reason, that the crap in the Bible is true. Why? Because he wants the crap in the Bible to be true. No questions, no evidence, it's all true, because that's what he wants. Because that's what makes him feel good. He's not looking at the reality that he's a part of, only the fantasy world that he wishes was real. It's why, if you go back and you watch his worldviews videos, he spends a whole lot of time saying, from the Christian worldview. But the Christian worldview is fundamentally flawed. Your emotional state doesn't mean anything. You just want to believe. And this is why you don't start off with a conclusion before you even evaluate the evidence. Because then, you wind up looking like an imbecile. You know, just like Daniel King. Atheists respond to the evidence of the finely tuned universe by pointing to the anthropic principle. This principle proposes that the appearance of fine-tuning is only an idea that humans have who can observe their universe. Because it's true. That is the whole point of the puddle example, which I have to keep going back to, sorry. You only think that way because it makes you happy. You want to feel special. Therefore, you invent an interpretation of reality that makes you feel special. But what you want doesn't matter. How you feel is irrelevant. Now, I've had this discussion a lot, but here it goes again. How many Christians have come up to you and asked if you want to go to hell? And my response is always, who cares? Because what I want doesn't matter. If there was a rogue black hole headed for Earth, my feelings about it wouldn't change a thing, would they? It's either coming or it's not. My emotional state is completely irrelevant. So if there is a hell, I'm going, and that's that because I'm not changing my mind until I am intellectually convinced that there's a God that's real and uh, worth bowing down to. And I am not currently convinced, and based on what I'm seeing from the religious, that's not going to happen anytime soon. The consequences of that are completely irrelevant. 
prove to me that it's true, or just leave me alone. So if no humans existed to observe the fine-tuning, the fine-tuning would effectively not exist. Therefore, life exists in the universe, not because of design, but because the universe had the capacity to eventually support life in one of its solar systems. Maybe more. We just don't know. Effectively, though, that's it. If the universe had been different enough to not support our form of life, our form of life wouldn't have evolved. Maybe another form would have, and they'd likely be arguing just how perfect the universe is to fit them exactly. And if no life had formed, then nobody would be around making these silly claims. That's just the way it goes. How you feel about it doesn't matter. This is what reality shows us is true. Grow the hell up. Richard Dawkins, the atheist, referred to this principle when he wrote, However improbable the origin of life might be, we know it happened without God's help on earth because we are here. And he was right. You have no evidence for any gods, and uh, here we are. Nice, huh? Douglas Adams, the author of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, mocks the argument from design when he tells the story of a puddle of water that wakes up one day and is pleased to find that his hole is perfectly designed to fit him. So, he knows all about it, but he still doesn't understand. I wouldn't really say if he was unaware, but holy crap, he's dumb. He's even dumber now that he understands the objections and still believes. Let's see what he has to say, though. I'm trying to be somewhat charitable, even though he certainly hasn't earned it. But these responses, rather than dealing with the facts of fine-tuning, Simply avoid them. And where are these facts exactly? Because all I've heard from you, from any apologist, are just empty claims. This is all your say-so, your feelings, and your interpretations based on your own preconceived notions. That is not a fact. Facts require objectivity. Facts require demonstration. They must exist beyond your personal feelings about them. And this is where the religious fail miserably, and Daniel here, he apparently doesn't care. He just wants to believe. And that's utterly stupid. Imagine standing in front of a 10-gun firing squad. The command rings out, ready, set, fire. All 10 guns report, but you're not hit by any bullets. Either you're on a movie set, or they're really, really bad shots. Now, I don't know what his next couple of words are going to be, but uh, let me guess. God did it. Or I could be wrong, but I figure it's got to be something along those lines. You can't explain it, therefore, God or whatever. Any religion can come up with their own comforting explanation for things they don't understand, but that doesn't make the explanation true. This is where they don't comprehend how evidence works. Just because you like a thing... That doesn't make that thing so. You have to show a direct and demonstrable causal link between your proposed explanation and the event in question. Just because you don't understand it, that doesn't mean that God done it. But let's see what he really has to say, because I'm really kind of getting tired of this blowhard for this video. Undoubtedly, you would be surprised to find yourself still alive. Now, what would happen if the 10 soldiers reloaded and fired again, but the same result comes, that you're still standing and in good health? Take two, because this is just pointless. This is just, well, what if? Who cares about what if? I care about what is. Show me anywhere that this has actually happened and we can investigate the cause. We might not be able to come up with one, depending on when his theoretical example took place, but then the answer is, we don't know. It's not God unless you have evidence that God is real, and God was demonstrably responsible. You got any of that? Yeah, I didn't think so. Then you might start to feel that the odds were on your side. If this happened ten times over and over again, eventually you're going to start asking yourself why no bullets are hitting you and how it could be possible that you are still alive. Maybe because you're a crap actor and the director is getting pissed. 
Or maybe it's a joke. Or maybe this is all just a fantasy in his head, which seems more and more likely all the time. This is why I don't do what-ifs. Give me something objectively real to evaluate. Then we'll talk. The truth is that the chances of this world accidentally evolving into a perfect home for the human species is so astronomically small that it would be the equivalent of surviving a firing squad of 10,000 rifles, not just once, but over and over again for many years. Yeah, um, your analogies leave a lot to be desired, especially when you so clearly misunderstand the reality behind it all. This is like Daniel standing there with a blindfold on and the director yelling, Cut! How many times are we going to have to do this? Do you have the slightest idea what the hell you're doing? Because obviously he doesn't. We're nine videos into this, well, ten because I think there was an intro. I could be wrong about that. It's hard to remember back that far, but uh, he still hasn't gotten anywhere remotely close to a clue. He clearly knows what he's doing is wrong, or at least he should, yet he persists. What kind of a moron is he? Let me know your views down in the comments. In the face of such odds, surely we have to start wondering why this world is so perfectly suited for human life. The fine-tuning of all the factors necessary for human life proved to me that this world has a designer. And I believe that designer is God. You still have to prove it. I mean, your series is called Proofs for God, so, um, yeah, you're nowhere remotely close. What he's really doing is just bald rationalizations for God, and even there, he's still doing a piss poor job at it. Now, I do have one more video in the queue, but I wanted to throw out the next couple so people can let me know if they're still interested in seeing these. Video 10 is DNA proves God exists. And I bet it doesn't. I bet he doesn't even know what DNA is. Next comes the human eye, then bacteria, then a screed against evolution, which I figure ought to be a peach. He doesn't get back to any philosophical arguments until number 14 when he goes to the ontological argument, and then comes an argument for morality. Now, I know we're still a ways out, but I just noticed that he published video 17 without ever publishing video 16. At least, I don't see it anywhere in the vicinity, and we all know he's not that bright, so uh, Daniel King is a dipshit once again. There are a couple of these that have decent view counts, I guess, but uh, I don't know. I'm hoping some of those will at least be watchable, but I guess we'll have to see. So how long do you want this to keep going on? Because I'm game as long as people want to watch it. Let me know down in the comments, and uh, we'll just keep Danny Boy around for as long as we can tolerate him. And how long that is, is completely up to you.